Hi everyone, my name is DJ Kepsi Richard. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today our discussion will be on partial differential equations, the continuation. We started partial differential equation the last time and today we will continue with it. And then before this video will end, I will take you through a theory called Young's theory. Young's theory. Then we will also learn how to classify partial differential equations partial differential equations so come with me so remember we say if we have a function let's say u that is dependent on two variables so n is equal to 3s squared plus 2s y squared okay and we are asked to find u of x that's the partial differential of u with respect to x it will be equal to here yeah, this will be 6x plus 4 plus uh, 2y squared because the y is considered as constant so 6x plus 2y squared we also learned that the partial differentiation with respect to y will be equal to, because there is no y here, the whole of that is constant. So the differential of that is zero. If we differentiate this, we get 4xy. We are all aware of this. So we are going to develop a theory out of this. So come with me. Yeah, so as I told you, we will look at a theory called Young's theory. So Young's theory states that for a function f of several variables, that's when the function depends on two or more variables, and the differential of f, the partial differential of f with respect to x, and the partial differential of f with respect to y are both differentiable. Thus, we can find them. At the point, let's say a b of the domain of f, then the partial differential of f with respect to x, then with respect to y at the point a b is always and always equal to the partial differential of f with respect to y, then with respect to x at the point a b. That's what Young theory is trying to tell us. So we are going to, I mean, look at the mathematical aspect of the what Young theory is saying. So let's say we have, let's consider the function f of several of uh, two variables, which is dependent on two variables, x and y, equal to x squared y squared plus 5, y squared minus x plus 7. Yeah. So we want to prove the young theory. We want to see if it is true. Maybe at the point, at the point 2, 1. So what is your theory saying? You said that the partial differential of x, the partial differential of f with respect to x, then with respect to y, at the point a, b must be equal to the partial differential of f with respect to y, then with respect to x, at the point a, b. So let's find the partial differential of f with respect to x. So remember, y will be kept constant. Y will be kept constant. So when we differentiate this, we get 3 x square y square since there is no x there the whole of that becomes zero then minus one the differential of a linear term is the coefficient of the variable and the differential of the constant zero is zero now let's differentiate this with respect to y now so x will be kept constant so I'll differentiate this to get six x square y Remember, this will be zero. Now let's find the value of this at the point two one, and see what we we'll get. We we'll get six times two square times one. Two square is four times six times one will be twenty four. Now let's find the partial differential with respect to y now. So x will be kept constant. So we'll differentiate this. We we'll get. 2s y then this will be plus 
10 y remember the differential of this will be zero because it's constant then this is already constant the differential will be zero now let's differentiate this with respect to x now with respect to x so y will be kept constant we get 6s square y then this is constant so it will be zero now let's find the value of the partial differential of s with respect to y then with respect to s at the point 2 1 we get 6 times 2 square times 1 2 square 4 times 6 that will be 24 you see that they are the same so that's to prove the Young theory so Young theory says that the partial differential with respect to x then with respect to y is always and always equal to the partial differential of f with respect to y then with respect to x at a given point that is what the young theory is trying to tell us i hope you understand play back the video and go through the the calculations i've done to support the argument now the next thing we'll talk about is we'll learn how to classify partial differential equation how it's classified so come with me okay so as i told you we'll learn how to classify pds that's partial differential equation so partial differential equations are classified according to one order two the degree three the linearity four homogeneity and then five constant and variable coefficient partial differential equations I will try to take you through one by one and see how you understand. But I want you to know that in classifying partial differential equations, we classify them according to one order, two degree, three linearity, four homogeneity, and then five constant and variable coefficient partial differential equation. The order, we, all, we already know it, but I will go over it again. The degree two is somehow understandable and explanatory however the linearity a partial differential equation if it is not linear then it is either semi-linear quasi-linear or non-linear then when we talk of homogeneity it is either homogeneous or non-homogeneous then it is either having a constant or a variable coefficient so I'll take you through one after the other so that we we'll know how to classify them when we are asked to classify or we we'll know how to name them when we are asked to name. So come with me. So first, by order. So we said the order of a partial differential equation is the highest ordered partial derivatives. So we know well, when we're learning further derivatives. So we have, if we have... Uh, dy over dx this derivative is to first order this is the first order then if you have d square y over dx square this second order then d y over dx squared this is the third order so the highest ordered partial derivative refers to the order of a partial derivative refer to the order of a partial differential equation for instance if i have the square u over del s square plus del s and del u over del y all square plus del u over del y so ask yourself what's the highest order in this partial derivative uh, partial differential equation maybe equal to 2x to make it an equation the highest order here is 2 this is to the first order this is also to the first order so the order of this partial derivative is 2 so the order is 2 so that's the highest order derivative or the higher order partial derivative another one let's say we have u starts with x x y plus 2 x u starts with x 
sans script y equal to u sans script s sans script y sans script y maybe sans script y again so now check this this is the partial derivative of u with respect to s then with respect to s again then with respect to y then the partial derivative of u with respect to s then with respect to y then the partial derivative of u with respect to s with respect to y, with respect to y, then with respect to y. So what's the highest order here? Remember, this is to order 3. This is order 2. This is to order 4. That means we differentiate u 4 times. Therefore, the order then is 4. The order is 4. So this is the order of a partial differential equation. Remember the order of the partial differential equation. Just look for the highest partial derivative. If you look at the highest partial derivative, that becomes the order of a partial differential equation. The next thing is the degree. We look at the degree. So the next classification is by degree. By degree. We say that the degree of a PD, that's a partial differential equation is the degree of the highest ordered derivative the highest ordered the highest ordered derivative the highest ordered derivative so you look at the highest ordered derivative and ask yourself which degree is the highest ordered derivative have that becomes the the degree of the partial differential equation so now let's check it what's the highest ordered derivative this is to the, uh, the second order then this is to first order this is to third order so this is the highest order derivative so this partial de uh, differential equation is to order three order three now ask yourself what is the power or what is the exponent of the partial order derivative the exponent here is two so we can say that the degree of this partial differential equation is 2. Not 3, not 4. Because the highest order derivative is 3. And the degree of that highest order derivative is 2. So the degree of the partial differential equation becomes 2. So we can say that this partial differential equation is to order 3 degree 2. Yes, is that one? Third order and to the second degree, so order three degree two. I hope you get that. Is the the degree of the highest order derivative becomes the degree of the partial uh, differential equation. Let's look at this one. Remember, this is to first order is differentiated twice, and the degree is two. This is to second order is differentiated twice. So, what is the degree? This is the highest order derivative. What is the degree? The degree is 1. Therefore, the degree of this partial differential equation becomes 1. So, we can say that the degree here, the degree here is 1. The degree here, the degree here is 2. So, this we can say the partial differential equation is of order 3 degree 2. Then this one is of order 2 degree 1. I hope you get that. So just look for the partial ordered derivative. The highest partial ordered derivative. Then ask yourself what is the degree of the partial ordered derivative. The degree of that becomes the degree of the partial differential equation. I hope you get that. As we move along, we'll be combining the degree and the order with it, with other things. So if you don't get it, you follow me and you'll get it. Thank you. The next thing we'll talk about is linearity. Classification of partial differential equation according to linearity. First, we say a partial differential equation is said to be linear if, if and only if, one, the dependent variable and all if partial derivatives is of degree one. It's of degree one. What does that mean? It simply means that 
the dependent variable. Let, let's say if we have del u over del x. The dependent variable is u and the independent variable is x, which I know you already know. Should Let's look at this. The dependent variable and its partial derivative should be of degree 1. So, this is a partial derivative of a dependent variable. You see that the degree here is 1. Let's look at another dependent variable. What is the degree here? It's 1. Look at this dependent variable. Uh, this partial derivative. The degree is 1. There is another dependent variable here. The degree is 1. When it happens like that, we said this partial differential equation is of degree 1. It, 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 it's linear. This partial differential equation is linear. So we can say that this is linear. So if we have something like this, look at this. Del u over del s r squared plus u squared equal to, let's say, del u del square u over del x del y look at this this is non linear it's non linear why the degree of this partial derivative is two it's not one the degree of this dependent variable is two not one so this differential equation ceases to be linear however this is linear now let's combine it and see the order is two the highest order derivative, partial derivative here, is of degree 1. So we can say that this is a, a partial differential equation that is linear with, uh, which is having a second order and the degree is 1. So first, second order, degree 1, and it's a linear partial differential equation. This is non-linear. However, however, that is not an enough reason to see a partial differential equation as linear because there is another reason another one is that there is no product between the dependent variable and its partial derivative there should not be a product between the dependent variable and its partial derivatives so there should not be anything like this partial derivative. This is a dependent variable. It's multiplying it. Immediately such things happen, the differential equation ceases to be linear. It ceases to be linear. Then it becomes another thing which we'll be talking about so sh uh, shortly. So when there is no product between the partial derivative and the dependent variable, then there can be a reason for you to call that partial differential equation as linear. However, that is also not an enough reason because there is another reason. The third reason is that there is no transcendental function of the dependent variable n or its partial derivative. What are transcendental functions? We have three main functions that we usually refer to them as transcendental. That's exponential functions, logarithmic functions, and trigonometric functions. They are what? They are transcendental functions. So, what we are trying to say is that we shouldn't have anything like this. Lin x, lin x, and lin u plus. Eh, maybe equal to 5. Look at it. See, this is a dependent variable, and we have lin u. This is a transcendental function. This is an exponential function. And we have a dependent variable there. This is a trigonometric function. And we have a dependent variable. Anytime any of this happens in a partial differential equation, then that partial differential equation ceases, ceases to be linear. So if you take a partial differential equation, ask yourself, is there 
all these three reasons. Does it satisfy all these three reasons? If it do sat satisfy, then the partial differential equation can be called a linear partial differential equation. I will take some partial differential equations and we will go through and see that if they satisfy the three conditions, if they do, then we call them as linear partial differential equations. So let's look at this partial differential equation on the board. So this is a partial derivative and a partial derivatives. Then this is a dependent variable here. Find out if this partial differential equation obey the three reasons or the three criteria. If you do, then you can call it as a linear partial differential equation. Now first, let's check whether the dependent variable and if partial derivative are of degree one. So this is a partial derivative, the degree here is one. The degree here is one. Then there is a dependent variable here, the degree is one. It will be that. Now we'll find out whether there is any product between the partial derivative and a dependent variable. So there is no product, there is no u multiplying these partial derivatives here. U is not multiplying it. U is not multiplying this. And there is no partial derivative here for the u to even multiply. So it satisfies that reason. The third reason. We find out whether there is any transcendental function of the dependent variable. Look at it. We have a transcendental function here. That's an index. However, it is not the dependent variable. It's an independent variable, x. Then we can say that this partial differential equation is linear. It's linear. Because it satisfies all the three conditions. What, what is the order? What is the order? So it's of second order. So order two. Order two. What's the degree? So what's the highest order derivative? The highest order derivative is this. What's the degree? The degree, the degree is one. So we can say a linear partial differential equation with degree one or that two. A linear partial differential equation with degree one or that two. That's how we name this. Let's look at the second one. Let's look at the second one. So there is a second one. So we'll find out whether it is linear. We'll find out whether it is linear. So first, let's check whether the dependent variable and partial derivatives are of degree one. So this is a partial derivative, the degree here is one. Partial derivative, the degree is one. Partial derivative, the degree is one. There is a dependent variable here, the degree is one. Satisfy that condition. The second condition. Whether there is any transcendental function of the dependent variable. Is there any transcendental function of the dependent variable? No. There is no even transcendental function in this equation. Satisfy that condition. Let's find out whether there is a product between the dependent variable and the partial derivative. See, this is a dependent variable multiplying the partial derivative. Therefore, that becomes a reason to disqualify this partial differential equation to be linear. Then it is no more linear. It is not linear. Not linear. Not linear. Then it becomes either semi linear or quasi linear or fully non linear. Fully non linear. So in my next video, please play about this one to understand the linearity, the order and the degree. So the next video we'll look at classifying partial differential equation according to semi-linear, quasi-linear, then fully non-linear. There are also conditions to satisfy that. So I'll end it here. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the, notifi uh, and hit the notification bell so that if I share a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Feel free to leave your comments in my comment box. So we'll meet again.